have split this up. Larry is going to make some remarks at lunch at the rec center, the brick building over in the park to my left, thanking our great, good friends at RAGS for the amazing job they've been doing for more than 20 years and they've done with this renovation. And Larry's going to talk, thank Christine Rowley, Rich Weinert, the older generation that started, that's okay, the older generation that uh, started with us and moved the cabin, George Fialco and Al Collins and others who are here, and Norm Gibson who's been here the whole time. Um, but I'll start now, Christine, and um, uh, talk a little bit about our family history. I, <laughs> I was named for my great-great-grandfather, John Donnelly, who built this humble home by hand with two of his brothers who came here as a refuge from the Irish, from the Irish potato famine. And this has been the, kind of the mothership for our family ever since. It's been, that's okay, just leave it, Brennan. It's been a uh, sanctuary, and even in the tough times of the Depression, uh, liter literally a uh, source of survival, a place of survival for our family. So it has a special place in our hearts. And there are three things I'd like to do as we gather here today. One is to honor the leaders of our family and two of my favorite people in the whole world, my uncle Larry Donnelly and my uncle Mike Donnelly. That's number one. Number two, um, uh, I want to just briefly recap and recall and reflect on, there were three very important prior restorations of the cabin in 1931, done by my grandfather, Hugh Donnelly, in 1968, done by Larry with help uh, from some friends and neighbors here, the Schweiger cousins, Elmer and Dave, and their nephew, Pat, and his daughter, Carolyn, did the renovation, the structural renovation of this roof and rafters um, here in the last uh, month or two. And they couldn't be here today because of a family family funeral. So we're missing them. And then the, the third historic renovation was in 1997 after the fire when the cabin was moved here. So, um, and then we'll finish by uh, celebrating with a ribbon cutting this new renovation and great work that I believe will have this mothership last another 150 years. So, <laughs> if I've done the numbers right, when the when the great great grand great 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 grandchildren of these little kids scampering around are assembling for their reunion in the year 2169, <laughs> the mothership will still be standing proudly here because of this great structural work we're building. Here. Okay, so how do I know about these historical renovations? Well, I got the book. <laughs> My son Brendan went back and interviewed, got old interviews, old documents, interviewed Larry, Mike, Mark Donnelly, and Dan, who had worked with their dad Joe in the 70s on the cabin, interviewed everybody, and wrote this wonderful book. So we now have two great family heirlooms. We don't have any other family heirlooms in our, in our family because God knows there was no money back in the old days. But we have this cabin and we have this book now that Brendan wrote as a keepsake. And in this book it tells the story of the previous renovations. The first one in 1931 was done by my grandfather Hugh uh, Donnelly and he had actually moved to Detroit when he married Francis Gavin who was born in Columbus Township in 1920 and they had they prospered in Detroit when it was booming in the 20s they had five young children all boys in eight years between 1921 and 1929 <clears throat> and then everything started falling apart on October 27th 1929 that was the day that Hugh's sister Mary who was a 36 year old school teacher beloved by her students and friends and family in Detroit died of cancer the next day was Black Monday, the biggest stock market, market crash ever that started the Great Depression. A few weeks later, they had a baby boy, Hugh and Francis had a baby boy, Thomas. Four months later, Thomas got pneumonia and died on Easter Sunday, 1930. This is all happening in the space of a couple months to Hugh and Francis. <clears throat> then a few months after that, Hugh's mother, the matriarch of the family, 
who had raised them as a single uh, uh, mother because her husband was killed by a horse, Kate Sullivan Donnelly, who was the great aunt of Catherine and Marie and Patricia <coughs> Champagne, who are here with us today. And ever, does everyone know Catherine and Marie and Pat? Yeah. They're sitting here. Her great, their great aunt, and Mike and Larry's grandmother, Kate Sullivan Donnelly, Donnelly died. And it wouldn't be long before Hugh Donnelly lost his job as the purchasing agent for a motor valve manufacturer in Detroit as the Depression hit. So what did he do? He came back to the mothership. And by his own hand, story it's on uh, it's in Brennan's book from the August 4th 1931 Port Huron uh, Daily Leader and Monitor, it's leader. Monitor Leader Monitor Leader um, the reporter came out and he found Hugh working here and uh, wrote each night sees him here garbed in overalls and perspiring with honest labor the cabin logs touching the ground were slightly rotted. Those higher are perfect. He raised the cabin about four feet, inserted new oak logs, and encased the foundation in good cement. This will last indefinitely, all done as a tribute to his grandfather John, who had come during the potato famine, and as a place of refuge for his family. So it did almost last indefinitely. At least it lasted until about 1968, when the old place was falling down. And that's when our hero, Larry, enters the story and saves the place. And I'm going to come back to that at the end because we have a little presentation at the end I'm holding. So hold, 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 hold a little dramatic pause as we, we're going to come back to Larry's heroism in 1968 saving the place. The third renovation that saved it was with the assistance of our great good friends at RAGS. In 1996, out on 29 Mile Road, Lindsay Road, there was an arson fire and this house came very close to burning. I just put Dale back here who has a perfect, where's Dale? Dale was one of the firefighters who was indeed quick and, <laughs> and, and, and saved the save, save place. Um, but there was a lot of damage and the, the, the damage to the cross beams and the rafters and the loft was never really fully repaired until it was repaired and replaced by Pat Schweiger and the team under Rich Weinert's direction and with guidance from Larry and Mike uh, this spring. It was futile to leave the cabin there and this is where we met, where's George Fialco? And Al Collins is here and Rags and they agreed to take it, put it here in the historic park and, uh, and uh, moved it in 1997. So, on that move, uh, and for those of you who have a copy, of, I know many of you have a copy of Brennan's book. Uh, it's been it's in the Library of Congress. We sent it to the Library of Congress as well as to various Michigan libraries and historical societies. Um, on page 120, if you don't have a copy of the book, it's not for sale. But for a healthy donation to the rag to the dog cabin for the rags donation I've got a box of ones I'll slip to you in exchange for a nice donation um, on page 125 Brendan has links a YouTube link Donnelly X 1848 X you can type into YouTube but he's got the links here and one of those links is a videotape that Mike shot on August 27th 1997 the day the log cabin was jacked up moved down 29 mile road moved driven up crash it a couple cars drove into a ditch and almost had an accident when they saw the thing. It was so astonishing. And I think that the, there was a, even a fender bender when they came back to the outhouse. And people were astonished the outhouse and driving down And Mike shot a video that he narrated. And that at the reunion tonight, we're going to play a little excerpt from it for the Donnelly family. But it's wonderful. It's full of emotion. Mike refers to the cabin by the feminine pronoun her or she throughout. He says they're setting down just as she sat facing south out on 29 Mile Road. She's doing very well, almost like a beloved ship. And just the emotion and the genuineness from Mike on this video is great. So I encourage you to look up the link there. Now, 
we want to have a little token of appreciation for Mike, who is the heart and soul of our family, always has great warmth for all his nieces, nephews, grandchildren, uh, sisters, brothers-in-law, everybody. Always has a smile on his face. He's the one who taught us all how to play euchre. <laughs> uh, uh, we, 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 we have that. Um, yeah, he's just a wonderful person and has always been great in our family. And uh, had a very, uh, this memento we're gonna have in a minute, uh, has a little bit to do with his career. He had a very long, distinguished career at J.L. Hudson's department store. And I remember that well, because when I was a little kid, every Thanksgiving, my dad made me sit in front of TV out in Pennsylvania and watch the national broadcast. He said, you look for Uncle Mike. He's a big deal at J.L. Hudson Department Store. And you spot him in the parade. Now, we got this like 21-inch black and white TV. <laughs> Mike was always, it was an honor to be, if you ever went to the J.L. Hudson Parade, they used to have employees in clown costumes at the front. It was kind of an honor to be one of the clowns. And Mike, Mike was in the clown costume. Now, how was I supposed to spot my Uncle Mike in a clown costume? But yet I was made to sit there year after year. So I, I know he was very, we have all, 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 I set up the poster so well they all fell over, but we have a poster of, of an ad with Mike when he was at J.L. Hudson. We also have a poster of Larry, and we'll take these over inside at the rec center so you can see them. And we have some historical posters over there, too. <coughs> and uh, there's some pictures of Larry and Mike on all the posters that fell down, but whatever. We can, we can hold, hold those up. Um, so uh, Brendan has, uh, Brendan's going to read a short letter that Larry wrote about Mike. And I'm going to get out while I get it. Come on up here on the steps, Brendan. And I'm going to get out the memento uh, to uh, honor Mike. Okay, so this was a letter Larry wrote to me about two years ago. Wanting to make sure uh, he put all his thoughts down about what Mike's meant to his family. And he wrote it to me in the mail. And I'll read it for you guys now. Uh, louder, Brad. Louder? Okay. So this is from Larry to me and to everybody. <laughs> Mike graduated from high school at St. Mary's in New Baltimore. St. Mary's was a typical small town Catholic school taught by Catholic nuns. With Ed's encouragement, Mike went on to New York for a high intensity learning program. Mike had a good experience there and it got him out of a small town environment. From there, Mike enrolled at a vocational school in Pittsburgh. He attended this program and lived with Joe and TC who were working in Pittsburgh at the time. From there, Mike returned to Detroit and went to work for J.L. Hudson, uh, the largest department store in Michigan. From that point on, Mike's talent was recognized and he was promoted from appliance maintenance to sales. He then was able to join Hudson's furniture sales department. Mike found his calling and Hudson recognized his talent. Along the way, Mike met Karen Walden, who was school teacher and they married. They went on to have three lovely daughters, Anne, Patty, and Brianna, all three of them graduated from Michigan colleges. Mike's business success continued to grow and he became the senior leading salesperson in the Hudson organization. For all his accomplishments, Mike is the real hero in our family. Oh. And then I'd like Ann and Patty and all of Mike's family to come up. And we have, we have for all the family, a Mike Donnelly bobblehead. <laughs> in, in, in his J.L. Hudson shirt. And we have one. We have ones for all the family. We'll hand out at lunch, but here's so you can be fiddling with them. And you know, uh, here's ones for the family, and if you can pass those around. So that's to our great love and admiration for Mike. We we, we, we express it through a bottle. Heartfelt. Thank you. Guys. Okay, now before we come back to uh, Larry in 1968, <laughs> I have uh, I have some gifts for Rags, and I'd like um, Christine and Rich Weiner to come up so I can present these, and then, as I said, we'll follow up at lunch, and Larry will have some. Uh, appreciation for the RAGS team. 
in um, in this cabin there was a 60 inch oak round table 60 inch diameter that was the dining table and the homework table for the family and Hugh Donnelly in particular drilled the kids into doing their homework state capitals multiplication tables and uh, it's part of the emphasis on education that's always been a part of our family culture so uh, that table is still exists it's been passed down to my brother Tom and Cindy in Pennsylvania uh, but Andrew where's Andrew uh, Donnelly Rob ran after Jamie okay <laughs> Kristen's husband, Adriana's father, Martha and John's son, Andrew, is a master woodworker and boat rebuilder. And he is going to build a replica this winter of the white oak table and gift it to Rags for use in the cabin. And we took, we have a little certificate, and we took a picture of the table with some of our kids who are now uh, adults in their 20s and 30s as little kids around the table in the Poconos. So that's number one. Number two is a copy of Brendan's book, three copies for the RAGS library. Christine, those are for you. Thank you with appreciation. One more book is, um, uh, this is my grandmother, Frances Gavin Donnelly's American College Dictionary, which she gave to me when I was about 10. And uh, she graduated from, she grew up in Columbus Township. Her mother died when she was 14. Her father had left the family, he was an alcoholic, and uh, family came together to help raise her. She worked hard and graduated from St. Clair County Normal School in 1910. Became a school teacher in Port Huron where she was Beloved, Carol Bentley has found some of the old articles of her students who uh, loved Francis as a teacher. Then she had a family that came back to the cabin, had a hard time in the Depression. In 1946, her husband died. Uh, Larry and Mike's father died of a stroke, and she went back to teaching. She was a single parent, still had Larry as a teenager, Marianne and Mike at home. So to earn a living, she went back to teaching, and she bought this dictionary as her reference to keep at home in 1948 and kept it with her in New Baltimore. So for the schoolhouse or the library here, this is our gift to you. Thank you. Next one. This is, a, this is interesting, this was passed down to me. It's a history of Detroit in the 1800s that Hugh Donnelly, it was a giveaway booklet at a bank when Hugh Donnelly was living in Detroit in 1921 and he kept it and it was passed down, so it's a little bit of local and family in Detroit history. And then finally, if Ken Simmons uh, could come up and join Christine and Rich. We realized when Brennan wrote the book and interviewed Larry that we, I don't know how this happened, we had bunch, been a bunch of knuckleheads in our family when we gave the log cabin here to Rex because it was a great idea. They were wonderful volunteers. They did a great job. But we didn't provide any financial support to maintain it. And of course, it costs a lot of money to maintain a building out in these you know, harsh Michigan winters. So with this current renovation, we've, we've created a Donnelly Family Fund at the Rags Foundation, of which Ken is the Every head generation. Of across the board in the Donnelly family in the last month or two has pitched in or made pledges uh, of seven, totaling $75,000, which was our goal for an endowed fund that will be invested by Ken and his team and in future years that will be used to maintain the cabin for annual maintenance and every 20 years when you have to replace the shingles or the roof for capital maintenance. Rich estimated those charges for us. And so, um, that's why I'm confident in 2169 this place is going to be still here and well, ma well maintained. So thank you to all the Donnelly family members. Thank you to Rags and the Foundation. And here I'm going to present Ken with the check for $75,000. It's not an actual check, it's actually a big cardboard fake check. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. All right, now, uh, now back to back to our grand finale. Uh, I didn't realize at the time, uh, but in 1968, the cabin was about a year, maybe two, from just being a ruin and splinters and boards on the ground. And that's when Larry came in. He was living in Toledo. Megan and Kevin were very young children. And he started coming up here on the weekends and he found people to, I don't know how you found them, Larry, but he found people, the stories in, in, the, in the book, it's fascinating, to rebuild, to take down all the boards. They, they took it down to the base, built a new foundation and rebuilt it. And it was this close to being gone. So what a hero Larry was and everybody who worked with them to save this cabin and preserve it for us. And he had support from his family. He had support from, from Joe and Ed, and Marianne and Mike and Huey, but it, and, and from Bernie, but it was mostly Larry. So, uh, Larry, thank you. We have a new uh, unveiling here under the green ribbon, and I'd like Kathy to come by and pull off the ribbon for the unveiling. You want Larry? And Larry to come on over as well. And Pat and Lori and Megan and Anya and Roman. Come on up as well. Kathy, go ahead. And I guess I, I'll read it. It should just pull right up straight. Have, Martha, do you have the scissors? It, 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 it will just pull right up. Oh, pull it up. Okay, this plaque says... First of all, for those standing far away, there's a picture of a very handsome young man with almost a full head of hair. <laughs> it is Larry. <laughs> and it says, Larry Donnelly is the great grandson of John Donnelly, who built this cabin in the Eight Brothers. Larry and his siblings, Ed, Frank, Hugh, Joe, Marianne, and Mike, were raised in this cabin during the Depression. By the late 1960s, the cabin was nearly in ruins. With the support of his siblings, Larry led a team of local craftsmen who restored the cabin so it would last into posterity. So Larry, this is our thanks to you for a great job. I don't deserve all this. Yes, you do. Uh, uh, there was a lot of people involved in this endeavor. Uh, this is a great family. One of the great families that came to America with millions of others who built this country. We're just helping it along. This is a, uh, a great building and uh, as things turned out, the best decision, and I've told you this before, that we ever made was to give it to the Historical Society of Richmond who have cared for it, loved it, and will do for, the, do for this community. and and particularly this community, to remember the history of this, uh, of this family and this uh, town, which is so important to us. Richmond is my hometown, and I'm proud to be back here with all of my family. Thank you. Thank you again. So we're going to wrap up here with a ribbon cutting. If uh, Mark and Dan and Jim and Kate, if you have the ribbon and could Hold it, and Anya and Martha are going to cut the ribbon. I have another helper. Oh, oh and Adri. Oh, come on. Excellent. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Oh. 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 And then when the ribbon cutting's done, we're going to get the family family all switched in for a big family photo.
Okay, we can have this tighter, guys. We're done. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Oh, hey, Tracy, do you want to fold the ribbon lower by walking in your face? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, go for it. She's <laughs> 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 <laughs>